Hey guys, it's Johnny Bosky. Today I'm going to talk about confidence. I did mention this in one of my previous vlogs that I love talking about this topic with my friends in particular. And I did ask whether you guys would be interested to hear more about my opinions and what works for me in terms of confidence. So here we are. Just quickly, everything that I will mention in this video are things that I do feel that they work for me and my opinions. So let's go. It may also be a little jumbled, but it's all part of the fun. <laughs> okay, so the way I view confidence is it's like persisting on a goal. What I mean by that is there are so many no's you can get before that turns into a yes. And that can severely impact your confidence, particularly with people who try to achieve their goals. More generally, I think to be able to prioritize yourself, know when to prioritize yourself, and allow yourself those self-care days is really vital and really important for not only your mental health but that will also in effect affect your confidence and improve your confidence just as they say to exercise daily to look after your physical health it's just as important to look after your mental health so i think with confidence mental health the strength of your mental health is very important i'll use me as an example so say if i I look like this, I'm dressed the way I am, and I'm in the city, and I'm just walking innocently, and a random, or whoever it is, happens to say something about my appearance, something I'm wearing, regardless. They say something, and it's negative. If you've built your mental health to the point where nothing external to you can affect you, you don't really need validation from others, then nothing that any random or anyone that is negative that they say to you will affect you. Kind of like that quote, I think there's a quote and it says something like For you to be affected by someone else's negative talk about you, you must already believe it Same thing So if I know I'm beautiful, both internally and externally If I believe that and if I know that, nothing else external to me matters I am really blessed to have an amazing and very supportive family. I understand many others may not, to which my advice would be to surround yourself with people who you either want to be like or you know you can learn from, all in a positive way. People who lift you up, because being around people like that, you know that they are secure within themselves and that's the kind of people you need around you to build your confidence. In saying that, I am a firm believer in staying really true to yourself, again, regardless what anybody else says. In the past, I've been called weird simply because of my personality and my sense of humour, to which I have really come to love about myself, so... <laughs> that, it's fine. <laughs> I... I, I like everything about this and I like the person that I am and becoming. I don't know why I'm so expressive with my hand. An example of this is I'm the kind of person who, and I tell this joke to my friends, I'm the kind of person who in the supermarket I could just talk to a cucumber. <laughs> like, I could talk to anyone about anything and again, to me, it doesn't bother me if I get ignored, it, do it doesn't bother me if the person doesn't react positively to me because I know that that is within them. There's also another quote. <laughs> People can only meet you as deeply as they have met themselves. And I think that is so incredibly true. Something else that I do to build confidence is to spark conversations with strangers. I just really enjoy that connection. Even if it's like 30 seconds, 5 seconds, a minute, it doesn't matter. To me, I just really enjoy making that connection or just seeing a smile or knowing I could have made a positive impact on someone's day. That also builds my confidence. Oh my goodness, a really good one is to stop negative self-talk. You could make jokes about yourself and you could view that as your sense of humour, like self-deprecating jokes, but it's, it's so bad because in a way, regardless of it being a joke, you do subconsciously take that on and begin to believe it. And the other thing is, the more you say something about a situation, particularly yourself in this case, the more true it is and the more you believe it. So... Stop negative self-talk, be positive, and focus on all the amazing qualities that you have. Because I know you have so many amazing qualities. 12 seconds later. Guys, Shy just sent me a text. She gave birth to a little baby girl. <laughs> She's so cute. How exciting. 
congratulations, Shy and Simon, on your little baby girl. I don't know why I said that like the guy from three, 365 days. <laughs> Moments later. Mm -hmm. uh, what was I saying? I think I will also give you an example on this. I had a best friend who, when I hadn't met her, she would make consistent jokes about herself in a very negative way. And I could easily tell her confidence and self-esteem was not very high and every single time i made a note to myself every single time i heard her say anything negative about herself i would deliberately stop her and i would say to her hey what you're saying is this i don't believe it i don't think you should believe it therefore i don't think you should say it say something else instead or don't say it at all and over the course of our friendship I recognized and I saw a massive difference in her confidence and self-esteem and it was really beautiful to see that and that's exactly what I mean as soon as you stop that negative self-talk any negative talk in general you'll begin to believe all those positive things that you're beginning to tell yourself so yeah by the end of our friendship her self-esteem and confidence was just skyrocket high yeah stop, stop all that negative self-talk just because of that story, I was also going to say uh, be mindful of who you surround yourself with, but I think I already mentioned that. But just to elaborate, make more conscious decisions about the people you do spend your time with because whether you realize it or not, it does make a very large impact on not only your present, but your future as well. Something else that helps me build my confidence is being consistent and mindful. What I mean by that is if you are going to do something and if you've told yourself you're going to do something, you need to commit to it. Because subconsciously, if you have told yourself, as an example, tomorrow I'm going to wake up at six in the morning and I'm going to exercise for one hour and then I'm going to make a green smoothie and breakfast. And if you don't do that, again, whether you realize it or not, you will slowly begin to lose trust in yourself because you have committed to something but not followed through. You have to have trust in yourself to build your confidence. So I would suggest starting with something very small. If this is something that you find very difficult, just say tomorrow, as soon as I wake up, I'm going to have a glass of water and make sure you do it. The reason why I do say that is because subconsciously, it's like you have told yourself that your own word can't be trusted, that you yourself can't be trusted because you say something, but you don't even listen to it. The other way you could look at it is it's almost like keeping a promise to yourself. So the other way you could look at it is kind of like keeping a promise to your friend, but the friend is you. Say if I'm going to say to my friend over here, hey, tomorrow I'm gonna promise you that I'm going to make you bacon and eggs in the morning. <laughs> and then it's the morning later and I didn't make the bacon and eggs. He or she, my friend over here, hello. <laughs> will lose trust in me because I said I was going to do something but didn't follow through. Oh my goodness, something else that you should really be mindful of, and I know this is very difficult, sometimes it is even very difficult for me to do, is not to compare yourself to anyone else. So the way I like to think about it is I compare myself to me a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, however long. And as long as I have become a better person or improved in certain aspects or in different parts of my life, then I know that I am successful and then I can be a little bit more confident in myself because I am consistently achieving the goals that I originally had intended or said to myself that I wanted to achieve. I also don't view failure as a bad thing. I try to find positives in every situation. <laughs> That's also another thing, being really positive in any situation. People love that because it is extremely difficult to consistently find something positive in any situation. I also think being positive makes you more confident anyway. It's kind of like that self-talk thing. If you are positive, generally, you will feel that warmth from others and within yourself anyway, and it would make you feel better. And that grows your confidence. <laughs> I think a good example of this is also body language in social interactions and situations. E.g. you walk into a room and if you're on your phone, you're looking down, you're fixing something on your shirt, you don't look confident. So being a bit more mindful, being a bit more open with your body language, head up, looking around, making eye contact with people, so important. So underrated too. <laughs> also in social situations, 
like I said, having open body language, but also don't be too serious. Be okay with laughing at yourself, but understand where your boundary is and make sure that you don't cross it in terms of your self-deprecating jokes, if that's your thing. <laughs> so another thing to build my confidence is if I recognize someone has disrespected me or said something in a manner that I didn't like, call them up on it. Be respectful be the way that you would want someone to approach you about it had you done or said something wrong but make sure you make your boundaries very clear smile i could talk about body this could be another whole video because i could talk about body language <laughs> for a very long time but smiling is also very underrated it's just it's contagious you look at you're probably smiling right now are you smiling right now <laughs> Well, I can't help but smile. Whenever I see a stranger make eye contact with me and they smile first, I love it. I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> oh, not exactly like that. <laughs> it's so important. Also, making somebody else feel that positivity and warmth from you makes you feel better. And in turn, guess what? Builds your confidence. <laughs> okay something else is the way you speak so people will believe in you if you do and an example of that is okay me talking about my books if somebody asks me a question about my books i am beaming i am smiling consistently like this <laughs> that book's scary is that really what i look like <laughs> But the way you express yourself is really important and can actually impact the way other people view you, of course, but your own confidence. And this does go back to one of my earlier points where I did say don't really look at external externalities for validation because you don't ever need that. Body language, also being verbal, is very important. Your tone matters, your diction matters. There is a lot, a lot. <laughs> to consider but the main thing is to believe in yourself and answer questions with a tone that's like yes this is what i believe not yeah i think i believe that to clear differences obviously there are times where you would use the, the latter for a completely different answer which is fine but we're talking about confidence here and the way to build your confidence is to believe in what you say and what you do because we're talking about social interactions at this point, it probably seems like I don't get, I don't get rejected, that people always are really polite to me, people always really smile back to me and etc. But that's not the case. There have been so many times, and I can give you so many examples of people rejecting me, people doing like, to me after I smiled at them or said a joke or just tried to spark conversation with them. But again, it doesn't really faze me because when I am comfortable with myself internally, nothing else really matters. Like it's nice getting compliments, lovely making those connections, but they're addition to my already existing level of extreme happiness or contentment, whatever I'm feeling in that moment. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, a nice to have, but I don't really need it. See it that way. Don't put any pressure on any connections that you do try to make. Now let's Let's play a little game, okay? Let's play a little game. I want you to picture someone very confident, someone you look up to, someone that you view has the confidence you desire and one day want to have. Picture them. Is her face on the screen right now? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you have pictured this person. I want you to ask yourself a few questions. Why do I think they're confident? What do they have and what qualities do they possess that makes me view them this way? What are their top three qualities that I admire about them, that I want to have. How do they dress? If that's also something that you are considering when you think about this person. When you have your answers, I want you to slowly adopt these behaviors and these traits because these are the certain things that once, it's kind of like practice makes perfect. The more you do something, the more you try to achieve it, the better you're going to get at it and the faster you're going to get it as well. Keep in mind, this is just to improve your self-confidence. So again be true to the person you are at heart don't change just to become a carbon copy because this is so this might be really cliche but it is so true there are so many literally billions of people in the world and everybody has a purpose everybody has a passion everybody has these little quirky things that they do that we come to love about somebody there is always something different about somebody that makes them who they are and you can even think about all your friends all your family whoever is in your life and think about it that way consider what i've just said while thinking about them because i guarantee you i am right <laughs> um also it's 
Actually, you know what? Something that I was really afraid to do was publish my books. <laughs> it took me a couple of years. I can't remember how long exactly now, but it took me a couple of years to actually publish my first poetry book, Bones. And I do wish I had done it sooner, but at the same time, I needed that time to process and build myself mentally to be able to actually be okay with publishing it. So something else I would say is consider the things that you are afraid of doing and then think about whether this list is something that will help you build your confidence because I can tell you now I just keep getting way more confident in not only my books and releasing them, publishing them and writing them, but that also makes an impact on me and the way I view myself because again I've said I'm gonna do something and I did it good question to ask yourself is what would I do and what would I try to achieve if there was no such thing as judgment if I didn't fear judgment that was one of the main things for me not wanting to publish bones I was so worried about what people in my past would think what family thought what friends thought about my situation my experiences whatever <laughs> oh my gosh something i love doing is watching very confident people in videos like this or in interviews watching their body language learning how they engage with people learning again how they speak how they interact with people the eye contact again i'm talking about body language again trust me trust me look up someone that you think has the confidence you desire and just watch them in an interview. I think, I, I think I'm running a little low on my tips. <laughs> if I do think of more, I'll consider doing another video. <laughs> Shifting your perspective is really important with confidence. What I mean is if something negative happens in your life, say if you ask a guy out on a date and he says no. Okay, cool. His loss. Next. Or not even next. I'll just focus on me because... I'm amazing. <laughs> Shifting your perspective to understand what you deserve. Being confident is not being cocky. Being confident is knowing what you deserve and not settling. That just reminded me, I think I posted a story about confidence. Maybe I, I'll read it to you because I used to do these Thursday thought stories where I would give, I, it's basically like a brain dump on a certain topic and I'm pretty sure I wrote about confidence. So I did find the story that I had on my Thursday thought segment that I used to do on my Instagram. I'm going to read it verbatim because it's pretty good. <laughs> so let's start by noting that confidence is not attained by any externalities. This means confidence is very much an internal feeling. Example, you could have 1 million followers but still feel insecure about your image and you could have 1 million dollars in the bank but still lack confidence in your business. Therefore, getting more followers, having more money, won't actually improve your confidence because the same concern is still there coming from within. Now that we recognize it's an internal emotion or state of mind, I'm going to tell you how I maintain mine. <laughs> Basically, it comes down to this very simple action of knowing who the F you are. It's the truth. She's right. She's good. <laughs> More specifically, here are some things that come to mind. Have courage to act on goals or things you want to change. That courage will turn into competence which will feed your confidence. Change your perspective. Focus on what matters to you. What will help you achieve your goals? Anything else obstructing should be considered a barrier or hurdle to knock down or get over. Get to know yourself. What you want your likes, your dislikes, what you will and won't tolerate. When the event arises where a disagreement occurs, you'll have the confidence to act accordingly. Understand yourself. You need to understand the emotions you experience in order to move forward from it. Once you've dealt with it, let it go. Don't hold on to any trauma or pain. <sighs> fail, yes, fail. Get comfortable with failing or rejection. Is it your passion? Great, prove it. Did they reject you? Cool, next. This one is kind of like expecting someone to do something and being disappointed when they don't. Don't be that guy. No one has to do anything for you or be anyone for you. You have to be able to do it yourself. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. I always learn the most about myself from these experiences. Laugh at yourself. Self-explanatory, but essentially none of us are perfect. We trip over things, we stutter when we're nervous, we had spinach between our teeth when we smiled at the handsome guy across the room. 
That has happened to me. <laughs> you have to be able to laugh at yourself with anything. Why else do you think I post, the, yep, that's right, the weirdest dance moves to my story? It's not because I look good. <laughs> Finally, remember who the F you are. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I really hope you took something away from it. If you did, please do let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you think. But as always, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye. Uh. <laughs> what? <laughs>